This story is really out there. Way out there, in outer space, in fact. Getting the big picture, you might say. First, a little background. Much of the western United States does not have enough rainfall to sustain modern life. In places like Idaho, entire communities exist only because there is a river nearby from which they can extract water. And without irrigation, there would be no agriculture. The legal right to take water out of the river is as valuable as land itself. But how do you determine how much water is being used on a given piece of property? That single issue has been the source of civil discord for generations and speaks to larger global issues like world hunger. Then along came a helpful new tool, mapping evapotranspiration using Landsat satellites. This is the geospatial technology section at the Idaho Department of Water Resources. We process satellite images and make digital maps. We're processing satellite images to see how much water is used on individual fields. Water rights have been a major issue in Idaho since the 1800s when the first irrigators began to divert from the various rivers to provide for crops for the miners. Very quickly, it became clear that there wasn't enough water to go around. We had a problem needing to map evapotranspiration in a better, more accurate, faster way. The system that we're using now in Idaho is called metric. We can detect how much water is being evapotranspired from the ground, how much water is being evaporated. Dave Tuthill really was instrumental in getting metric incorporated into the water management part of this department. From satellite imagery, we can detect that change in temperature from the earth and compute the amount of water that's being evaporated. And he recognized the importance of metric as a tool for water right administration. So by detecting how much cooling takes place, we can tell the rate of evaporation and compute how much water is being used by a certain field or a certain crop. Metric stands for mapping evapotranspiration with high resolution and internalized calibration. It models the way water changes from liquid, either in the soil or in a plant, to a gas and then moves up from the plant into the atmosphere and away. Rick Allen really is the brains behind all of this. We have the problems, he has the solutions. Rick literally wrote the book on evapotranspiration. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization Manual on Evapotranspiration was written by Rick. The satellite that we use primarily is called the Landsat satellite, and it circles the globe from north to south. It takes a very high resolution series of snapshots, separate pictures over six different parts of the solar spectrum. I and mean, we combine them and convert it into evapotranspiration images or water consumption maps. Uh, Bill Cranber is the fellow who actually runs the model here. With this modeling system, we can map where water is being applied and used, but we can also see how much water is being used. This is a mosaic of two Landsat images. So each of the images is 100 by 100. So it's about 10,000 square miles for each. We can zoom into this image, and here we, we can start to see the individual fields. And we can even zoom in a little further than that, and here we can actually see the individual pixels. These are 30 by 30 meters. And then this data is processed with the metric models and is converted into evapotranspiration or water consumption images. The ET images don't really show you how much water is applied to the land. They show how much water is being consumed by the land. So finally, for the first time in history, we we're able to look on a field-by-field -field basis and know how much water is consumed by various types of vegetation. 
Mark Twain observed that whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting over. Many of Idaho's water rights are tied to the actual consumption of water, not necessarily to the amount of liquid water applied to a field, but the amount that's consumed into evaporation. The beauty of Landsat is that it's, it's public data. We process everybody using one set of data. Everyone has access to the same data. And this is a complete change from the way things have been done in the past when everybody just squabbled over his own data. An agreement on data and on the modeling to use that data, it goes a long way to resolve issues. Once people have a common base of knowledge, it's much easier to negotiate a solution being able to know what you're talking about before you can begin to, to understand and to meet each other's needs and try and work cooperatively uh, within the resource base that we have. The level of detail to be able to make these decisions on a field-by-field -field basis. There really are no alternatives. The Department of Water Resources, the University of Idaho, the Western States Water Council all worked very hard to convince NASA that this technology was absolutely critical for Western states to be able to manage their water resources. NASA finally has agreed we will have a thermal band on Landsat 8. One of the most important applications in my mind is to help sustain some of the global uh, water supply and food production. We know that in many of the developing countries the water is relatively poorly managed and our hope is that long term we should see million, tens of millions of people uh, with a better food supply. So speak your mind Cause every dream deserves a chance to live forever of all ideas in the search to find the come to some solution but not alone cause every dream deserves a chance to live forever every dream deserves a chance to live forever join the flow the stream of all ideas in the search to find the come to some solution You're not alone Cause every dream deserves a chance to live forever